ISIS.org. I just Googled how to make a PowerPoint presentation, and it was the first one on Google results. So ISIS.org has all these wonderful presentations. So how do we make a PowerPoint presentation? Um, you know, there, there have been a lot of uh, pitfalls that we've made over the past few years. Um, mistakes that can be easily avoided. So hopefully this presentation will minimize that this year. So tips to be covered. Uh, outlines, light structure, fonts, color, background. The proper way to present a graph. Uh, spelling and grammar, which is pretty self-explanatory so we can discuss over that. Okay, so uh, present, a PowerPoint is a visual tool, and as such, it should be easy on the eyes. So uh, you always want to uh, follow the habit of the less is more approach with PowerPoint. Never make paragraphs, you know, uh, always outline. Bullet points is great, as you saw from Lorena, Farzana, and Ronnie's presentation. Bullet point is the way to go. Um, avoid paragraphs, uh, complete sentences even, uh, because the main information should be coming out of your mouth and pre uh, PowerPoint presentations should be your backup. It should not be, you know, just the presentation itself. Uh, so in general, you should use one to two slides per minute of your presentation. Again, writing point form, not complete sentences. Uh, and don't include so many points in your slides. Uh, as I said, uh, avoid wordiness, use keywords and phrases. Again, uh, the complete sentences should be coming out of your mouth, not the PowerPoint itself. So this is a bad slide. It has too many words, as you can see. It has a bullet point, though, but <laughs> a paragraph. Show one point at a time. And it will help audience concentrate on what you're saying, and it will prevent the audience from reading ahead. You can read that. Uh, very important stuff. Do not use distracting animation. It's very cute, but for science presentations, you should leave it out. Uh, do not go overboard with the animation, and if you and if you are going to use animation, uh, be consistent with it. Uh, use animation that will help uh, the audience understand what you are saying. Uh, for example, like last year, there was a, an animation of a colonoscopy, and that was really cool stuff. Uh, but don't have like Mickey Mouse doing a dance or something like that. <laughs> uh, so it, this is pretty self-explanatory, right? You want to use big, uh, this is a big, uh, a good, a font, <laughs> good size, you can read it. This will be all a Moodle soon too, so yeah. Uh, capitalize only when necessary. Uh, as Professor Ross said, uh, it denotes uh, like yelling, so just use it sparingly. Uh, do not use complicated font. Simple is just better. The simpler, the better. Don't use all these fancy fonts, it's not necessary. Uh, don't go crazy with the colors. <laughs> Avoid that. <laughs> that as well. uh, okay, so graphs. This is a very important uh, point to me. Graphs should be uh, graphs by itself. If if I see a graph, I should be able. To, to understand what it is without you explaining it to me as much. Uh, with that being said, graphs should be explanatory enough. I, I guess I'll go into it. Uh, always title your graphs. Uh, use graphs rather than just charts and words. Data in graphs is easier to comprehend and retain than it is raw data. Uh, and trends are easy, easier to visualize in graph form. Again, PowerPoint is a visual tool, so feel free to use graphs. Graphs are always good. Uh, end your presentation with a simple question slide to invite your audience to ask questions as you've seen from uh, the previous presentations. Oh, I guess, oh, I skipped this. This is fun. Uh, 
You know, you want to have like a sentence uh, describing what this chart is all about. Uh, this is a good graph. Can anyone uh, tell me why? Raising your hands, why? Go ahead. All right. What else? Has a key? Yeah, it has a legend. I know that blue means blue balls and red means <laughs> red balls. We're way now, no. Go ahead. Why is it good? It's large. It's large, yes, yes. <laughs> it has a title. What else? What else? Uh, most importantly, it has labels as well. Uh, you always want to label your ad. Axis, excuse me. Um, it is really self-explanatory. But to make it more complete, you may just want to, out of habit, just label this one as well. As well. So put item number of items sold here. Uh, so yeah. Why is this graph bad? Quickly. Small font. Excuse me. Small font. What else? Come on, just shout it out. Just shout it out. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> title, no title, yeah. What else? Colors, yeah. Uh, well, the colors are kind of pretty. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is pretty small. I don't know what's going on. What are these grid lines for? Uh, I mean, they're pretty uh, distracting, no? So, yeah, that's pretty much it on that end of the thing. Oh, wait, there's another presentation, it's even shorter. This is how to make a science presentation. <laughs> As you can see, structure of how you want to outline your presentations. Uh, you know, as, as you know, there, there are a lot of variations in all these presentations. And uh, Lorena and Fernanda's slides and outline were different from Ronnie's, but in general, uh, all these presentations should follow a general outline and this is what this is about. So your first slide should have your title, your name, your mentor's name, the institute, and date. You want to include your HCS here too. You want to be all fancy and all that. Oh, please. Uh, this is where you have an introduction. Um, introduction, you want to let the reader know uh, what you'll be talking about and background information if necessary. Uh, Ronnie, for example, in his introduction, he introduced uh, the background information of CADPR. Why is C, uh, what is CADPR? You know, so you want to uh, start your presentation with that, with that relevant information in order to, for the audience to follow what you'll be saying next. Uh, your hypothesis. So, um, what are the expected results? Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be too fancy, two sentences, two key phrases, rather. Um, what, what do you expect your results to be? Materials, if you want, put some pictures of the materials that you use. Again, uh, this is not uh, just one way to do it, but it is the correct way, a correct way, so, uh, yeah. Methodology, uh, what was your process? Uh, include steps, outline them, uh, include pictures. Go crazy, don't go crazy with that. <laughs> Results and future work. Um, for many of you, uh, when you do present, uh, for example, next week, you will have results. But again, like Professor Ross said, you want to put uh, either what are you expect the results or what your future work will entail. Um, so yeah, uh, results are not always necessary. References, uh, uh, you want to include your bibliography, and this is uh, one of the accepted ways um, um, to, to cite your, your journal articles. So it's last name, comma, first name, period. And then the title of the article should be in quotation marks, and it's followed by a, a period. And then the title of the journal, I forgot to put this uh, in, in italics, but the title of journal, excuse me, should be italicized or underlined, whatever you prefer. The volume issue, dot issue number, um, 
And then in parentheses, the, the year of the publication, 1986 or whatever. Uh, and then the page range uh, is two to five or whatever. I said 1986, but it's always a good practice to um, uh, focus on articles that are uh, uh, no less than, uh, no more than 10 years old. So you know, you always want to keep up with the recent research. And yeah, that's always a good practice to practice. Acknowledgements, you always want to acknowledge the people that helped you.